it comes to the world of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, the world of Hyrule, the sheer size and scope in this game is truly a sight to behold. It's gigantic, one of the most ambitious open worlds I've ever played. And the best part about this world is that it's a giant playground. It rewards exploration and experimentation. It's massive, and I still enjoy exploring this world to this day. But of course, we all know that Breath of the Wild 2 is coming, a direct sequel to this massive open game. And while we've returned to the world of Hyrule before in Zelda games, we haven't returned to a land this massive. As we do know we're going back to this Hyrule, However, that can't be all there is to it, as this is a new game. How huge, how big is Breath of the Wild 2's Hyrule going to be compared to the first? What's up guys, HMK here once again, coming to you from the 5th dimension. This honestly one of the most exciting aspects of Breath of the Wild 2, I mean other than Ganondorf returning, but the fact that we're going back to the same Hyrule. I want to see how it's going to be changing and what could be added to this. If you thought Breath of the Wild was huge, I feel the sheer scope of the second game might just make you want to lie down. With that being said, how about we get into it? Strap on in for the safety of hype, let's dive directly into the noise. When it comes to the sheer size of Hyrule in Breath of the Wild, I'm sure there's a bunch of people that are going to enjoy going back to this massive landscape. But of course, there comes the idea of they're just reusing the same Hyrule from Breath of the Wild. As big as it is, we've been here before, and this is a sequel. We need something new. Of course, there's the idea of how this world will be adapted between Breath of the Wild 1 and Breath of the Wild 2, especially if they decide to throw more malice or get rid of all the malice that we saw in certain areas in the first game, including that of the Colosseum and the Akala Citadel. We already have the idea that the world is going to change in some form as at the end of the trailer, Hyrule Castle rises out of the ground. We don't know if it's going to be floating or the idea that I had that Ganon's tower is actually under Hyrule Castle and it's just going to go really high up and it's just going to be one gigantic building. But the thing about that is that it comes from the underground and as we see in the Breath of the Wild 2 trailer, Link and Zelda and the remains of Ganondorf all go underground. And I feel this is the biggest pointer that can give us an idea of how big and sheer scope and size of the world Hyrule can be in Breath of the Wild 2. I've had a couple of theories on what the world can be like above the ground and of course some notions on what it could be like underground. But as we see in the trailer, there seems to be a whole lost forgotten society and lore that is located in the depths of Hyrule. Which tells me that the underground crevices of this land could be well developed in the darkness, telling me that there could be an entire underground society, long forgotten but intact underneath the land of Hyrule, so developed that it can mirror what we see above the ground in sheer size. That's right ladies and gentlemen, Breath of the Wild 2 could be times 2 the scope and land of Hyrule as we know it in the first game. Double the size, double your fun, double it with double mint gum. And honestly, I don't think an idea like that is way too far-fetched because one, it would definitely mirror the aspects of previous Zelda games in which we had to go with a dual world setting. Especially that of A Link to the Past, one of the most famous and heralded Zelda games which had to deal with Hyrule and the Dark World. So in Breath of the Wild 2, you'll be dealing with the surface world and the underground each landscape as big as the other. And of course, this would make sense as Nintendo was hiring topographers to work on Breath of the Wild 2. And honestly, I don't think that workforce will be regulated to a world we already know and they're gonna be using again in terms of the surface. They're gonna need that workforce to help develop what's under the ground. And that way, players can play around with what's familiar under the sun or what is unknown beneath the dirt. And when it comes to the sheer scope of how big the underground can be, we've already had hints like that in Breath of the Wild 1, including the giant hole where the Gerudo Tower is sitting in, and of course the so-called bombless pit located in the Yiga base. These could be potential access points to the underground area, and to give it a bit of duality when it comes to Hyrule, the overworld of Hyrule and the underground of Hyrule, is that in the overworld you can go anywhere you can see, it's not segregated or walled off. However, in the depths it's going to be a bit harder to traverse, so you might have to go down at certain access points all over Hyrule in order to get to certain areas in the underground, which could have decayed or broken away after so many years. And this way, exploring this massive underground 
Underworld, we can learn more about the forgotten lore that relates to Ganondorf, the Sheikah, the royal family, and possibly even the Zonai, because we all see it, we all know it, that looks a lot like Zonai architecture underground. And I've got a big theory about that lining up. Just thinking about the dark depths of Hyrule gets me super excited. Imagine enemies that cannot be in the overworld, under the light, under the sun, that can only exist underground, which would explain their absence in the first Breath of the Wild, and exploring and charting the sheer amount of new land that is previously unknown to us and possibly everyone in Hyrule. And just imagine if they decide to do any type of callbacks to certain areas that are known to be deep under the ground, including that of Under the Well and the Shadow Temple from Ocarina of Time. Yo, how wild would it be if Bongo Bongo just shows up in Breath of the Wild 2? And if this is truly the case, then we have a massive game on our hands when Breath of the Wild 2 does release. And this way, it can give us a bigger, grander adventure on the overworld and the underground. When it comes to discovering what is different above the ground and seeing all the new stuff we can discover for ourselves under it. Knowing Nintendo and what they did with the first Breath of the Wild, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility for Breath of the Wild 2 to be double the size of the first game. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. How big do you think the world of Breath of the Wild 2 is going to be? How big do you think the underground is going to be in general? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And once again, if you enjoyed this video, like, share, favorite, and most importantly, subscribe to HMK for more Zelda content every week. Big thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this video happen. If you want to find out how you can support HMK for just a dollar a month, please check out my Patreon in the description box below. Alright guys, until the next video, this has been HMK from the 5th Dimension, and I'll check you guys later.